that's where a lot of this is kind of like, are you open-minded or are you just trying to speak your mind, get something off your chest and vents? Essential oils for dogs? Well, I think this woman knows best. Hmm, I don't know where to touch my face. But anyways, I'm gonna cover a comment that was left on one of my videos. Link will be in the description below. And I'm just going to read it off and then go from there. Okay, so here we go. She says, no, you do not pet your cats or dogs after using essential oils. Cats tend to lick themselves when they are grooming and will ingest the essential oil somehow. Cats do not have liver enzymes like humans do, making it difficult for them to metabolize essential oils, is spelled with E-S-E-E-N-T-I-A, -E -E it was a typo, it's cool, you know. thus increasing the risk of toxicity. I've read her claims on doTERRA's website, but I see no facts or evidence to what she is claiming. It was a veterinarian that I had referenced in the videos I was doing. She spoke at the doTERRA convention as well. This person goes on to say, just because she's a veterinarian does not make her words right. And just because you leave a comment on my video <clears throat> doesn't mean you're right either. All right, there we go. It's a, it's, it should be more about finding and speaking more complete and accurate information and, one, and, and basing it off of what we interpret properly so that an accurate conclusion can be had. When we try to get into the right and wrong realm, that is a very tricky subject because right and wrong implies that you're using a standard. And if there are different standards for things, then right and wrong will never line up or be matched. You know, kind of like what's right and wrong to an atheist is going to be oftentimes different of what's right and wrong to somebody who believes in the Bible. And a lot of times there may be some similarities, but there may be some differences. But the point I'm trying to make is that when there's two different standards, right and wrong are going to be re relative to those standards. And they're not always going to be the same. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. She goes on to say, where are the scientific evidence stating that when using CPTG certified pure therapeutic grade essential oils? That's a mouthful. I've had lots of practice. We have seen certain oils that can be used to actually support the kidneys or liver. How much is she getting from doTERRA for blatantly stating all these claims without any evidence? Well, I'm a big fan of fact-based evidence. I don't know if she was compensated to basically do a, you know, an article in the, one of doTERRA magazines. But that's besides the point, right? I mean, again, we should be focusing on complete information. If it's not complete, let's, let's try to make it complete. Accurate. If it's not accurate, let's try to get the facts, you know, make it accurate. The pros and the cons from each side. And, you know, that's like four data points there. And then, you know, making sure we're interpreting things properly and keeping our own predisposition or presumptions, you know, just make sure we're aware of them. That's, that's the key here. And, and uh, presumptions and predispositions are just what you believe to be true. And anything that contradicts that is automatically wrong. So we, we need to not have that type of mindset. We need to be open-minded, right, to the truth, regardless of if it contradicts our belief system or values or things like that. All right. Goes on to say here, based on personal experience... I accidentally touched my cat's nose after using essential oils. She had adverse reaction to it. Well, nobody recommended touching the nose or inside the ear or any open orifice of the cat or dog in my videos, but I can imagine the bad experience you'd have. I mean, I've had bad experiences because I've used peppermint or other essential oils when I wash my face in the morning, part of my facial regimen. I've done videos on that. Make sure to check those out. But then, you know, later I might be, you know, put in my contact lenses and I didn't wash my hands fully. And I touch my eye and it's like, whoa, you know, that's not cool. So now I put in my contact lenses before I wash my face. Ooh, lessons learned. I actually made that mistake multiple times. But anyways, not as much or not really any more. <laughs> All right. Then they go on to say, till now, her nose, that I pointed to in the beginning, always gets crusty. No matter how much I try to clean with warm water and a towel. So no matter what, just take precautions and do not use essential oils around them. Now, what essential oil brand did you use now, okay? Because that could affect things as well. If it had a lot of high alcohol content, like most other brands do, you know, or was there contaminants, fillers, pesticides, herbicides? I mean, what brand was it that wasn't mentioned? That's okay, though, you know. goes on to say here, so no matter what, just take precautions and do not use essential oils around them. Like I said earlier, 
they are already doing perfectly fine without essential oils. Are they? Pets have needs too, right? They, they have anxious feelings. They may be angry that you left them alone with no food or water. Or, you know, they get jealous if you pet another animal or another person or spend more time. I mean, they, pets are like little people. So, we gotta, you know, acknowledge that they have needs. I don't know I was going to say if they have goals, but they have definitely, they have needs. I mean, they're not writing down on their little vision board, you know. I want to have better health. But, you know, having better health with them from a proactive standpoint could save a lot on the bills later on. So, that's important to keep in mind. I know a guy I was watching on YouTube, he said... He spent like $10,000 on a dog. I'm like, ooh, that dog family at that point. I mean, after the first few hundred, that dog family. Okay. There's no need to mend whatever that's not broken. All right. Give some links to what they're talking about. And then some quotations internally by adding drinking water, food administering directly into the mouth or in capsules, not without veterinary discretion. Okay, so they're basically saying... Uh, you need permission by a veterinarian to take certain oils internally or uh, I guess she's referencing to the doTERRA website here um, all caps seriously question mark question mark how is this even okay animals can't talk unlike humans how can you confirm that they're okay with this well again it depends on what their health priority is number one and it also depends how you're applying it where you're applying it is there dilution the frequency of it how much you use I mean there's a lot of factors I talked about that in the video series so this person was just kind of cherry picking and being like, see, this is what's wrong with your video. And I'm like, see, there's more videos and other sources. And it's important to try to be more objective and less triggered. But I can understand why. Because you had a little nose incident with your cat. And now everything's wrong with essential oils. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Baby out with the bath water or oil out with the cat. Mm, okay. Lastly, they say there's not enough scientific evidence to say that they that it is safe for them to consume essential oils and this is only coming from doTERRA. I don't see any other essential oil companies claiming such thing. Horrifying. Well, there's tons of information on PubMed. If you literally just Google PubMed and you type in essential oils once you get there and you start typing in maybe like cats and essential oils or dogs and essential oils or essential oils uh, you're gonna find tons of information there's also I'll have another link here down below in the description area which will be another resource that doTERRA does provide about the aromatic science and the facts around the effectiveness of essential oils now this person's saying well what about with pets and cats and dogs check PubMed all right and if you need additional resources I can give you those just send me an email I can send you references but at the same time, it's one of those things where if you already believe something to be false, like essential oil shouldn't be used with pets no matter what, whether it be aromatic topically or internally, then it doesn't really matter what facts I bring to the table because you're already in that camp and you ain't going to cross over the fence. So that's where a lot of this is kind of like, are you open-minded or are you just trying to speak your mind, get something off your chest and vents? and help me make video content <laughs> but at the same time you know address whatever they're talking about you know I, I try to make sure that you know that's why I do these videos is so that people are, are feeling heard and understood even though I may not be agreeing with everything they say and people don't agree with everything I say I mean if we if we were the if we agreed on everything then we'd be the same person okay and that's just not possible all right, well, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button if you did. Share this video with somebody that would benefit from it. And most importantly, check out those links in the description below. There is some more learning, fact-based education around essential oils, pets, essential oils and pets, dogs, cats. Okay, so let's do it. And I'll see you in the next video.